Eric says, can you walk us through the selection of security controls of risk management framework since you touched based on controls? Okay. Can you walk us through selection of security controls and risk management framework? Yes. Yes, I could totally do that. All right. So first of all, let me just, here I am on NIST's website here. I'm going to make this straight to the point and quick. What I'm going to do is bring up the risk management framework wheel here. Risk management framework compliance. I want you to get a visual of what this process is all about. Here is an image of the process right here that I want to show you. Just randomly got this off the internet, but that's the process right there, right? So what is this process? Risk management framework first of all bird's eye view of what risk management framework is it is managing the level of negative impact to your organization by applying security controls security control would be like making sure there's a username and password making sure the password is 12 characters long with up and down uppercase and numbers and special characters those are security controls, but there's many, there's hundreds of other ones. So his question is, how do you know which controls to put on this specific system, right? So the way that you do that is really with this first step. See the first step right here? This categorize the system. The very first thing you're gonna do is categorize the system. And when you say categorize the system, what you mean is categorize find the security category of the system. So there's three different categories of systems. You've got a low, a moderate, and a high. So low means that a low categorization, security categorization means that, give you an example, it could be like a web server. You have airforce.gov has a website that uh, basically is a recruiting channel. It's a site that tells you about the Air Force, where to sign up. It doesn't have super important information. It's not like the Secretary of the Air Force is putting announcements on there or there's classified information on none of that. It's just a website that promotes the Air Force and there is a recruiting mechanism. And that's it. If that site goes down, what is the impact to the Air Force? Minimal, right? If the site goes down, first off, they have a second one that comes up automatically. If it gets hacked and somebody takes it down and puts some stuff on it, it's a minor embarrassment. Air Force take it down, put a new one back up. There's no critical information on there. If it gets hacked and somebody steals information, it's no big deal. They just blank that one out, bring up the backups. It's cool. It may take them three days to get the new site up. It's not going to be a large impact on the organization. Our quote unquote moderate or medium level category is different. So we talked about low. Now we're at medium. Medium risk means that if my system goes down, well, let me give you a specific example. I think that's the best way to explain it. A medium system would be like a leave and earning statement system, like a system that has a database that handles checks. That is important. That's not, that's not a website, right? That's, if this goes down on payday, how are we supposed to know which soldiers were paid and which airmen weren't? That is very important. Like the, maybe the checks still go out, but they have wrong information on it. That is important. So that is what you would call a moderate impact system, medium or moderate impact system. So if that system goes down, we need to get it up within the next 24 hours. It's not no three days. There's actual critical information. There's, there's PII on there. That's personally identifiable information. There's social security numbers on there. There's all kinds of stuff on there that's very important. So that system, that database is not very important, but it's important enough to where our soldiers, our airmen won't get paid. We won't know. It'll be screwed up. We got to go to the backup system, right? Last one is high. A high impact system means that if this system goes down, somebody might lose their life. A good example of this might be if you had a system that tracked the movements of the enemy. 
you've got soldiers on the ground in a undisclosed location and they have a system maybe they have like a a little system that tells them where the enemy is and where aircraft is and stuff like that and that system can save their life and that system goes down so that's a real-time operation literally the lives are on them on the line and let's even take a step further and say that there's actual classified information on that system because it's showing troop locations, troop movements, how much you know about the enemy, all that stuff. That goes down. It needs to be come back up immediately so people don't die. You know, as bad as it would be like the system is compromised. They steal a bunch of information. Now they know where all the troops throughout the whole area of operation are. And now they can target and pick and choose which troops they want to take out so that's in a way that's you know that's worse how do we know what controls to put on these three types of systems let me show you real quick so I'm gonna to go to NIST 800 and I'm gonna show you what I was talking about if it ever comes up <laughs> this is pretty slow okay here we go right so this is not the right okay here it yep this is it let me show you what I'm talking about here. Move this over a bit, and I'm gonna very briefly take, get my head out of here. Give me a second. There we go. There. All right. So, check this out. You see this right here? Low, moderate, high. Kept mixing up medium and moderate, but what I meant was moderate. That's Anyway, low, moderate, high. This is how you determine what security controls to put on there. So let's say we were on our website, our Air Force website. This will tell us all the low controls we need for AC controls. That's access control. AT controls, which we talked about earlier. Security awareness. And then AU controls, which deals with auditing, like logging and stuff like that. Event logs, audit logs. Then you've got tons of other controls here, but all these controls would apply to that Air Force low-level uh, web server. Now, let's go to our earning statement paycheck system. So these controls are different. Like there's way more controls here on this one, as you can see, than there are on the low. The low is going to have way less controls. And then the high, that system that we talked about where it's watch opposition troop movements is going to have even more controls and even more what you call them uh, these are additional controls like not only do you need to do the account management but it's going to go even more in detail about what you need to do and let's click on one real quick so it breaks every single one of the controls down like what control enhancements that's what they're called all these things you need to do so it's way more stuff in high so to answer your question the very first thing you need to do is control categorize security categorization once you do that you have a baseline of security controls to use then there's another step that you have to do and that's called tailoring tailoring means like let's say that Air Force system for example let's say the Air Force system is is controlled by the Air Force Training Department. I'm making that up. The Air Force Training Department has a facility that has wireless in there. So now the Air Force Training Facility has to protect everything on that web server, but they also need extra extra controls because they have wireless. You know. So that tells you that they need to have additional controls on wireless so let me just show you what I mean here if you can still see my screen so let's go back here let me just show you some wireless control wireless controls low impact do have wireless controls controls would be dash 18 I believe dash 18 there's a couple of wireless controls let's just AC 18 I got part of it right so when we're tailoring the controls we are putting controls in that match the environment that the system is in so in our example of the Air Force website that's inside of an Air Force training department training facility they also need to do AC 18 but let's say 
our moderate impact system leaving earning statements this one that's printing out checks for soldiers sailors and airmen is pretty important but as moderate impact goes down we just need to get it back up within the next 24 hours and we need to get these checks sorted out so it is important but it's not people aren't going to lose their lives they're going to have a temporarily late check but let's say the facility that houses this does not have wireless so you would tailor out that control tailor means just like it the word implies you are fitting the controls based on the environment and the systems configuration so those are the two ways that you select controls number one categorization security categorization number two tailoring the controls you're going to tailor out some things and you're going to tailor in things depending on the fit of the system that you're doing so i hope that answers your question that was about the quickest way that i could explain it it's probably kind of long-winded that is it and i'm looking for more questions here let me see if there's anybody else here before i let you guys go so what i'm doing is i'm broadcasting on facebook at the same time i'm doing this so i've got all these windows and stuff open i got it and i gotta get used to this so i'm like losing stuff <laughs> i might have closed it let me see but while i'm looking for this i'd like to say thank you guys for purchases thank you guys for the kind words appreciate everybody who watches this on a regular basis i do this to help people out and to help to get more people in our career field because we definitely need more people we always need more people and um if we can get more people like you guys out there who are hungry to get more information and it's then that really helps out our whole field so yeah this is something i do for fun and profit so again if you guys are interested in knowing more you can go to combo courses tons of free courses out there that you can learn more about cybersecurity, learn about information system security officer work learn how to make up to six figures in this field learn how to work remotely not just for it by the way the techniques that i use there will help you in any field because it's pretty open in the, in the way that it works and that is it thank you so much to maya j thank you eric for your question and thanks everybody else for watching appreciate you guys